In today's video, I complete the third 100 day chunk that I spend in this mangrove exclusive world, which of course means that at the end of this video I will have spent 300 days on this project. I spawned in right where I left off, with my two villagers that are still remaining in my starter base. However, I left them to do some beginning of the episode stuff, and while I was doing that, I found another wandering trader. This dude is about the third one that I've seen, and that's a pretty good rate, I think, of them spawning, so I went to go get some emeralds, and when I came back, I bought some moss, some flowers, some black dye, and some slime balls. It was almost everything that I had, but I really wanted to make sure that I could get all of the kind of rare blocks in this world that I wouldn't be able to get anywhere else. After that, I wanted to see if I can breed the llamas that the trader had because I wanted to have some animal around here that wasn't a friggin' toad. So I made some hay bales and I tried to breed them, but they wouldn't do that, so I killed the trader, and then the llamas still wouldn't breed, so I tried to tame one llama, I put the spooky enderman carpet on it, and I went to go and make some more hay bales. I came back and I bred both tamed llamas and a baby llama actually spawned, which was what I wanted, but it spawned and it had some trader carpet on it, and I really wanted it just be a solid color llama, but I would still keep it, so I let all of the llamas underneath my mansion, I made some fences, and I built them a little llama enclosure. And it wasn't very decorated, but it will keep them in one spot. I went a little ways into the woods because I wanted to place some moss and then bone meal that. So I did just that, and then I made a path back so I would know where that little spot was. Then I went into my enchanting tower because I wanted to plant a little field of nether wart, even though it was kind of in the way. It was something that I could trade with my cleric for emeralds. After I completed that, I added more to the mansion. In the session, I built up another tower. It was the shorter of the two, but I made a little balcony off that tower to make it a little bit cooler. I also built up some of the main hall because that is the largest section of the build. Then I took a break from building, and I tried to bring the second librarian over to the villager hall. I bred the villagers again, and I traded with everyone to try and level them up, and I moved some more villagers over. Then I gathered my stash of rotten flesh that I had been hoarding, and I traded as much of that as my cleric would allow me to in one day. And then, you guessed it, it was off to do some more building. I leveled up my XP so I could make a decent set of complete armor. While I was in that area, I didn't see my cleric anywhere, and I assumed he had died, but when I looked at the very top of the tower, he had got trapped behind a bookcase, so I had to put a block there so his dumb ass wouldn't get trapped again. Then I gathered everything I would need, because it is about time in the series that I went and fought a dragon. After getting some food and a whole bunch of blocks, I headed off in the direction of the portal, and it only made sense that I got lost along the way, so I had to use some of my eyes of ender to keep me on track. Luckily, none of them broke, and I made my way to the portal. The luck of none of the eyes breaking on the way here did not continue because I was one eye short in the 12 set, which meant that I had to go all the way back to my house where my portal was to go into the nether and walk the eternity to where the fortress is. In the overworld, I made the eyes of Ender, and I saw another trader, so I gathered some emeralds, and I brought a spruce sapling and a sea pickle, and some red sand. And I walked back, thinking all the way about how useful some wings would be in this exact situation, but I returned to the portal, I finally opened it, I jumped in and I began the fight with the Ender Dragon. I was able to shoot some of the regeneration towers before I accidentally looked at an Enderman, and I was restricted to that puddle of water because of that, which, of course, allowed the dragon to kill me. When I got back, I gathered my stuff. Just kidding, I died again. But when I got back, I destroyed the rest of the towers. And I'm willing to bet you've either seen this or done this before, so I'll cut to it dying. And me going to raid the end cities. I spawned literally inside of one, but it didn't have a boat, so I had to keep searching. And I spent so long running around that eventually I increased my render distance to hopefully see something. And I was so desperate and about to give up when, at last, I saw a boat. I immediately ran over and I raided it. I collected the wings and the dragon head, and along with all the other loot that I had, of course, and I flew back to the portal, I headed back home, and on the way, I collected a beehive that I had saw on the way there because I desperately needed honeycomb for my copper. When I returned, I planted my underplants that I can't think of the name of, and I built an outdoor-ish area to house my bees, which, by the way, isn't completely decorated yet, so don't worry. I harvested my mini field, it's very small, and I should probably make it a better setup, but spoilers, I didn't. However, I did trade with my villagers and move some into the mansion. I focused on leveling up my stonemason because I can get different colors of terracotta from him. I also randomly saw this enderman in with my llamas, so of course I had to put him in a boat. I then worked on setting up an area to farm wood, and I placed some azalea I got from the moss, and my spruce sapling which I bone mealed and collected the wood. I then decided it was about time I brought my llamas up from their depressing pen and into one of my grass plots. That led me to doing some interior work mainly improving the villager hall, and after I did that, I set up a little mini food farm in my short tower. I moved my two villagers that were from my starter base in, and the goal of this was to try and move completely out of my starter base and into the mansion, so I got my shulker boxes, and I moved absolutely everything from my chests into the room that was below the food farm. I then moved on to my bee room. I was able to use the flowers that I so handily got from the trader for the bee house. The glass design is meant to look like a bee, but obviously I can't get yellow dye, so... Then I finally organized my chests, 
area that I kind of had set up, and I went into the nether to get some netherrack for smelting, and I accidentally found this ancient debris. However, it was only one, but I still kept it. I then used my XP from the dragon fight and the loot from the cities to upgrade my armor with better enchantments. I checked on my farmer, and of course he got stuck in his composter, so the farm didn't have any potatoes. I then decorated my lawn next to the bees, and I made a little pond. Then I went and named that fish that I had found in the first episode in my bubble elevator, and I named him Harold. I deemed the pond Harold's Pond, and then I went up to upgrade my chest room, because it was kind of lacking. After I made this, I also made this weird little lampshade, and then I renovated the hall floor to brighten it up a little bit. I added the beginnings of a fireplace on the next floor, which doubles as a ceiling for the villager hall. The design for the fireplace used a lot of copper, so I went down into the mine to mine some, because I almost immediately ran out. While I was doing that, I found another slime, which I killed for loot. I got back, and I continued work on the fireplace and the area around it. Literally, after I completed it, I realized I built the whole thing on the wrong level, so I had to destroy it and the floor and move everything up one block. After that complete mess of shenanigans, I decided to check on my farm, but it still wasn't doing anything. So I decided to relocate my smelting room I moved everything to the bottom of my new enchanting tower. I added a blast furnace to this and I made another stone cutter to keep in that room. If the fireplace wasn't enough, when I went back to chop some trees, I realized that I forgot to come back for the spruce saplings that fell and they all despawned before I could get any. To take my mind off that huge failure on my part, I decided to relocate Harold. So I made him a little fish tank. I also made this waterfall starting from the balcony at the top of the mansion. I relocated Harold because I wanted to bring all of my frogs up. I had kind of forgotten that I left them underneath in a small enclosed space, so I gathered them all, and after I made a glass ceiling so they could never escape, they seemed content in there, so I moved on to moving my enchanting setup to the actual enchanting tower, and I made the staircase leading up to it. I also made a chandelier from some random blocks, which is why it isn't really that extravagant. Then I made this little decoration to separate what will eventually be my kitchen from my enchanting tower. I wanted to do more decorating, so I made this umbrella for the little balcony, and the last thing I did was add a little bit more to the build, which isn't 100% finished but it's livable and it looks okay. Definitely much better than when we started. So this is the last video that I plan on making in the series for a while because I'm starting a new one. So I said a temporary farewell to all of my pets and I realized that I didn't name these two llamas, which by the way, the baby llama despawned at some point. I don't know, don't be mad. And I can't think of a good enough name for a pair, so they'll just have to be nameless for the moment. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you didn't, then too bad.